Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how to add a G3 head to any character. So whether you have a character that you've created yourself, a Freebone actor, or you're using a template one like the one we have on the screen right here from our uh, actor character G3 Freebone folder, this scarecrow here. I'm going to talk about how you can uh, add, add facial features, customize them, uh, convert your head into a G2 plus head, and a lot of other cool things along the way, so stay tuned. So the first thing we're going to do with this Scarecrow character is take him right into composer mode. And let's talk about how you can apply different head templates to your character. So in the content manager under the head tab, we'll have a bunch of heads in the head folder here. You can see we have G1, G2, G2+, and G3 heads, and also hybrid morph base from uh, Crazy Talk Animator 1. Let's go ahead and apply a G2 head to our character. Now before you do this, you want to make sure that you select the head bone. In this case, it's bone 5 right here, because this is the head of our character. And we'll just import in the head by double clicking it. And it'll prompt you if you import in a G2 or G1 head, it'll prompt you for the angle that you want to import it in as. And you can choose anything from 270 to uh, 90 degrees there, because these G2 actors have multiple angle profiles. Since we have a front facing profile, we'll just go ahead and select apply. And then you can, you know, reposition and resize the head as you see fit. And voila, we have a scarecrow with a, uh, different type of head. All right. And you can also do the same thing for G3 head. So if we go to G3 head and we import this one in, again, make sure you have the bone five selected. You can just double click that and it'll add to that bone. And it won't prompt us this time if we want to choose a different angle because G3 heads only have a single angle. Okay. So uh, we can, you know, resize and rotate that as we want as well. Now, another way you can do this, let's import in a G G1 head this time. If we go to comic heads right here, let's import in this uh, Eddie zero one head. You can also click and drag it to the bone right here. If I click and drag it, you can also apply it to different bones. So in this case, I'm going to apply it to our hand bone. Now it's going to ask that uh, if we want to replace the current head because you're only allowed one head per character, we'll go ahead and press yes. And this time we can import it in as like, you know, 315 degree head. Go ahead and apply that. And then, you know, we can uh, resize it and uh, reposition it to wherever we like. And you can uh, preview. If you select the character, you can preview. And you can see the hand bone. You can you know, move the head around just like that as well. And if we get out of here, press escape, we can also go back to stage mode and you can see that that head will puppet. If we use the facial puppet tool, select our character here, go to the facial puppet tool, you can see we can uh, puppet that head and have all these different expressions like that. So it's like the scarecrows holding a uh, dismembered human head, I guess. Fine for Halloween. All right, let's go back into composer mode here and let's talk about how to create our own heads. So I'm going to select our character again, and this time we're gonna go up here to create head. Now we have the option to create a morph-based head or create a sprite-based head. Uh, what I'm gonna do is make sure we have the bone selected first. I'm gonna select uh, create sprite-based head, okay? Uh, because we're gonna create our own sprite-based head from scratch. It'll ask us if we want to replace the current head again, and we'll choose a zero degree angle. And then it'll bring in this uh, template head right here, this blank white template head. So again, we can reposition, resize that if we want, but we're only going to use this as a placeholder, basically. We're not going to add anything to this head. Let's go to the content manager and replace this uh, face here. So I'm going to go to the head section here again, twirl down the head tab, and uh, twirl up the head tab, rather, and we're going to go to face. In faces, we have a bunch of different faces. Now, I've installed a bunch of different content packs, so you may not have this many uh, options, but you should have the G2 and G1 stuff uh, embedded. I'm going to replace this head with a, uh, this face, rather, with the G2 face here. You see we get this broad chin uh, character right here. We can, you know, make that a little bit larger to block out the pumpkin head in the background. You can always mask out that pumpkin head, by the way, as well. And we had talk about that in other tutorials. And let's bring in some eyes. In this case, we're gonna bring in some G1 eyes. I'm gonna bring in these angry Eddie eyes, I like to call them. Now, if you bring in like G1 uh, eyes, it'll ask if you, uh, it'll basically warn you that there may be element misalignment. They won't apply they might apply in a little bit of a wonky way because of uh, you need to, meaning to adjust them manually, okay, since they're different generations. So you can see they're a little bit close together. So, you know, we can always just really simply reposition, resize, and replace those. Let's get rid of our bones so you can actually see what's going on here. There we go. And maybe this one can be a little bit larger as well. All right, so now we have our front-facing uh, angry Eddie eyes there. And then we can go into uh, eyebrows as well. Let's do another G1 eyebrow. Let's do the uh, bushy gray uh, grandpa eyebrows here. And you can see those apply a little bit misaligned as well. So you can you know, reposition those, something like that. Make them a little bit larger. There we go. Bring this one over. This one really needs to be resized. 
Again, these are meant for 315-degree uh, facing characters, so the ones on the left side will be a little bit smaller in general. All right, I think that works fine. Let me move this up a little bit. There we go. And let's give him a nose as well. Let's twirl down the bro bra brows and give him a uh, nose. I like this little pig G1 nose here. So I'll apply right to the middle, basically, and we're good to go on that. And then we'll go ahead and apply a mouth. So the mouth I'm going to use is actually from a G2 head composer kit, available for purchase from the content store. And I'll bring in this uh, mouth 05 here. I kind of like this mouth. Now this one needs to be uh, rescaled, obviously. It's a little bit small, so we can just scale it up just like that. Boom, there we go. Okay, and from that point on, we are good to go. Let's give him some hair for uh, just for good measure here. Maybe some G2 hair. These ones are embedded with Crazy Talk Animator 3. And there we go. Resize, maybe just stretch it out a little bit there as well. Cool, and now he's got some funky looking hair. All right, so there's our character. Now let's take a look at how this character animates in stage mode before we move on. Because I'm going to talk about G2 conversion, uh, G2 plus conversion rather. Okay, so here's our character. Let's open up the uh, facial puppet editor. And you can see right now all the sprites are using manual sprite, sp manual sprite switching rather when you uh, puppet your character around. So this is the way we used to animate in Crazy Talk Animator 1 and 2 uh, with sprite switching. So to, to convey different expressions, the sprites would just switch, like in a jerky kind of fashion like this. Okay. Now, if you want to change that to a smoother type of uh, animation, you need to convert your head to a G2 plus head. So let's go back to composer mode here. And uh, you'll notice if we double click on any of these uh, facial sprites, like the eyes, for example, you'll notice that they have a, an incredible library of, uh, you know, different uh, expressions here. So these are the ones that, that, that we were using in the previous example for uh, facial puppeting. Okay, the eyebrows have them as well. And in addition, the mouth also has them. So there's different, uh, you know, mouths as well. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to convert our head to a G2 plus head. Now the way you can do that, just have your head selected and go edit and convert to G2 plus facial system. Now what this will do is it'll ask us if we want to, uh, you saw the big sprite libraries we had for each, each facial feature. It'll ask us if we want to remove them all or just convert them to extra sprites because we're only going to be using a single sprite. We're going to be stretching it uh, and morphing it basically. If you convert to extra sprites, you're still going to have all those sprites in that library, but they won't be used unless you manually use them. If we select remove all, it's just going to remove everything there. We're only going to have our basic one. Let's just choose this for now, uh, since we're not going to be using any of those other sprites in this example here, and we'll go ahead and apply that. So now if we double click it, we'll have, you know, the very basic stuff. It'll be uh, cut down quite a bit. And if we select the mouth, for example, if we can select it there, there we go. We only have the basic uh, nine uh, visine shapes for, for uh, lip syncing. So uh, the facial uh, mouth shapes for lip syncing and then your basic uh, facial expressions as well. So very basic stuff. And now if we go back into stage mode and if we do some facial puppeting now, you'll see that our character's facial expressions will now morph. So we get, you know, things morphing and stuff like that. So it looks a lot more, a lot more uh, beautiful, smoother uh, for, you know, animation. And uh, you can test out all these expressions and see the examples here. Okay, so that's uh, what converting your G3 head to a G2 plus facial system will do. What we're going to talk about now is creating your own custom facial sprites uh, using Photoshop and other stuff like that. So what we're going to do first is actually go into Photoshop and we're going to create our character some custom eyebrows. So let's go to File and just create a new image. And I'm going to use 600 by 300. Uh, the size you use is totally up to you, but generally this should work as uh, well for you know, small facial sprites. What we're going to do is just create a simple uh, eyebrow. Okay, so I'm going to use a brush. Let's go ahead and use, uh, you know, this size is okay, but let's choose um, a brush like this one here. And then we can, you know, create ourselves a simple sprite. Uh, let's make sure that we're using uh, the brush tool instead of the erase tool there. And we'll create something like, uh, something like this. Okay, we can make a double layer bushy eyebrow like this. Now, what you want to do is make sure that there's no tilt to your eyebrows. You want to make sure that they go directly across, like a flat eyebrow across the image like this, okay? So you don't want to have an eyebrow that's curved or anything like that. You want to make sure that they go straight across. Now, how you sculpt it is totally up to you. Just make sure that they go straight across here. And let's choose a different uh, brush for our eraser here, uh, maybe something like this. So you sculpt it a little bit, bring it down like that. Okay, so... You know, that'll work just fine. We'll have some, you know, big bushy black eyebrows and we can, you know, sculpt it a little bit more later. I'm just going to go ahead and save that. We'll go to save as. 
I'm going to save it to my desktop. Make sure you save it as a PNG. Make sure you have a transparent background as well. We'll call this one uh, right brow. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, save that to our desktop. Okay. And then we'll go to image or uh, image rotation and we'll just flip the canvas horizontal there. And then we have our left brow. So we'll just go ahead and do the same thing. Save as and we'll call it uh, left brow. Make sure that we save it as a PNG, not as a PSD. There we go. And good. So that's pretty much the simplicity of eyebrow creation. Again, it's a pretty crappy example, but we'll just uh, close down Photoshop now because we don't really need it anymore. And I'm also going to uh, take an uh, image from Google Images that I've already searched here conveniently called Cartoon Mouth. I just searched Cartoon Mouth uh, using PNG files. And I'm going to use this uh, clip art image that I found, this uh, transparent PNG, the checkerboard background there. And I've already saved it to my desktop, so we don't need to do that right now. And if I go to my desktop, you can see we have left brow, right brow, and our little uh, uh, mouth there, whatever that name is. Okay, so I'm going to go back into uh, Crazy Talk Animator here. And if you want to replace your sprites on your character's face, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can select the sprite, go into the sprite editor, or you can simply just double click the sprite itself. So I'm going to just double click this uh, left brow here. And then you want to go ahead and double click your uh, sprite and choose the replacement image. In this case, we're going to choose the left brow. So we're going to have a really big left brow. Uh, don't worry about that. What you want to do is close down your sprite editor and make sure that your selection box is blue because this is the bone edit mode. And then you want to go ahead and scale that down a bit uh, and give them these nice, uh, you know, stern looking black eyebrows. You can rotate them and, uh, you know, really place them wherever you want on the image. Okay. Or on your face rather. And we'll do the same thing for the right eyebrow. Make sure we replace that. Close her down and uh, rotate it, scale it, and uh, just place those somewhere reasonable. I think that looks okay. Um, need to move these a little bit over. Okay, good. I think we're good right there. And let's do the same thing with the mouth. So again, the mouth, double click, and we're going to just replace the normal mouth. You can also replace the other sprites as well, but we're going to show a simple example here for uh, time constraints. And I'm going to replace that with the uh, PNG. And again, it becomes really large. So let's just uh, scale her down a little bit. And then it looks like a handsome dude with trimmed eyebrows and big rosy red lips. All right, so we've pretty much done everything there. Now, I talked about the wireframe before. You'll be able to see a better example here. So if I press Control F1, check out the wireframe on these new sprites. If I go to Edit and Smooth Deformed Object, deselect it. We're going to see it much simpler, okay? So these ones will be much straighter, and the lips will be just straight as well. So you want to make sure that you, when you replace these sprites, that you go to Smooth Deformed Object, and you'll have a much more complex geometry that will allow for better morphing, okay? So we'll just Control F1, uh, tab through that. And let's take a look at our facial features, how they react, our new facial features, how they react with facial puppeting, all right? So we'll go to the Facial Puppet tool, and there you go. Now you may see the sprites being replaced, um, you know, with other sprites, this is a good example of, you know, the sprites in action. And you can see that uh, they'll move around like this. If you go to extreme examples, sometimes your sprite might break through or, or cover other sprites. Like if you take your mouse all the way to the outer edges and stuff like that. Um, there's other ways that you can, uh, you know, modify the level of expression on your character. So you can see the eyebrows, you know, going up like that. There's ways you can modify the level of expression. We talk about this in another tutorial going over here. To your advanced puppet settings and you can change the strength of your brow animation for each animation each profile will have uh, different strengths on uh, these features right here um, another way you can do that is we're going to briefly talk about the facial animation setup in the composer mode so let's go back into composer mode here and with your character's face selected I'll zoom in on the face again here go over here to facial animation setup and once you're in facial animation setup this will allow you to modify each one of these eyebrow levels. Okay, so, um, you know, eyes and nose and mouth as well, obviously. But let's take a look at the eyebrows here. You can see this one. You can see the example that it's supposed to be uh, the template here. And you can see that our eyebrow, you know, conforms fairly well to that. And if we choose something like this or like this, you can see the level of uh, expression. Now, you can increase or decrease the amount of strength on these. So if I want to increase the strength, that's a really easy and fast way to do it. I can decrease the strength. And it goes up, uh, decreases, and it goes increases exponentially. So be careful with that. Okay, if you want a really angry type expression, you can go ahead and have fun with that. 
And, uh, you know, this one right here, very flat. This one right here, if you want to maybe, you know, ex exacerbate the, uh, the eyebrow, you can right click and drag and select all these, uh, different points here on the freeform deformation grid. And you can move it up like that. All right. So if you wanted to really emphasize that, we can do so. You know, at a really high expression. And if we want to mirror that to the other side, we can just go here to mirror options. And we can mirror the current expression, which is this one, or you can mirror all expressions. So if you've done all the expressions on the left eye, you know, left eyebrow rather, you want to mirror them over to the right eyebrow, then you select mirror all expressions. But we're only going to mirror the current expression in this case. So we can select our right eyebrow here, and you can see the same expression. All right. Pretty cool stuff. And there's all sorts of other options here that we can talk about, but we're going to have a separate tutorial on this facial animation setup panel. Just kind of wanted to show you the basics there. You can always reset and uh, preview and everything like that. So, you know, here's a preview of all the, all the examples right there. We'll just close that down right now. And let's take her in back into stage mode and I'll show you, uh, the facial puppet tool now. So we got a facial puppet. We choose something like, uh, a sad one. Now you can see that those eyebrows, the change that we made, is really exaggerated. Now we have a really, you know, sad expression on the face, okay? And you can do that for all the other ones as well. Okay, we can even go down here and see the very the eyebrows really going up in a very exaggerated fashion. All right, so that's about all there is for this tutorial, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot about, uh, you know, creating your own G plus face, a G2 plus face rather from uh, simple facial sprites and importing in your own facial sprites as well. And uh, make sure you check out our YouTube channel and our uh, forums at forum.reillusion.com. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.